Alright guys, welcome to another movie versus movie 2 and I am Future Filmmaker 39480 aka Joshua Drake here again and today we are going to be tackling the web slinger himself from two different franchises with the same name and the same guy. Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy versus the amazing Spider-Man movies. I'm going to break this down. I'm going to talk about which one is better, which one is so-so. So, let's let's really break this down and I'm going to do this my way. So, let's go. Let's get started. First up, we have the actors. Let's talk about the actors. Now, when it comes to the 2002-2007 trilogy, I think Tobey Maguire is a better... He, he's a good... People give Tobey Maguire crap in one of the most unnecessary ways. They say he's not funny, he doesn't make jokes enough. Here's the thing. He only made jokes when it was necessary. When the scene calls for it, you know? And I think McGuire played the, the Spider- He played Peter Parker and Spider-Man to the best of his ability. And I think that he, he, he absolutely stayed faithful to the comic. Now, when you talk about Amazing Spider-Man, now, as much as I like Andrew Garfield, I don't like the way that they made him this kind of like douchebag character that just doesn't give a care. I don't like that. But when he is in the suit, he um, does he does get a slight amount of he he has his moments, but again, it's just. I can't blame him. Is most of the is most of the script material that he has is not all that good. But personally, the winner by far in this race is Tobey Maguire. Let's see if Mr. Maguire can catch up. Now, as for the tone of the Spider-Man series, I think this has a better tone, cause. The trilogy itself has a better tone. Yes, it gets darker, and the third one is the darkest of the trilogy, but it does have humor in it. And it does actually feel like Spider-Man that I know. It feels lighthearted. All three of the Sam Raimi films do. Where in this series, here, yeah, they do take a little bit of Batman Begins. They're still in Batman Begins. I'm tired of seeing all these superhero movies thinking they have to be Batman Begins. You ain't gotta be Batman Begins. You ain't gotta be R-rated to be cool. Just be your own movie. And that's what BVS and Suicide Squad, even though this is a Spider-Man first movie, first Spider-Man trilogy, first duology thing, that's does what BVS Suicide Squad and Captain America Civil War as my Apocalypse were being their own movie. They weren't trying to copy The Dark Knight. They weren't trying to copy Batman Begins. They were its own thing and that's why I say this has a bet these movies has a better tone. This Sam Raimi films has a better tone. So in that I'ma give it I have to give it to Sam Raimi because he knew what he was doing. Mark Webb knew what he was doing but it just, those movies just got screwed over by a studio a little bit. Okay, so as far as the villains in both the Amazing Spider-Man movies go, okay, I will admit, the suit on Green Goblin is not the best, but for 2002, but hey, it was the best. This suit right here, it was the best they can do. It was a, it was the freaking first movie. As far as I know, at least it's not Dane the Hans suit, where that suit is like freaking, like, what is this? This is not him. This is not Green Goblin's suit. But, I, but, I'm, but anyway, 
the villains, and what I liked about this trilogy, it focused on one freaking villain in the first two movies. You focus on Green Goblin here, in the second movie you focus on Doc Ock, who played brilliantly by both was played brilliantly by William Defoe and Alfred Molina, and in the third movie, you focus on Sandman and Venom and Harry. And you want to know what made Harry Osborn a good villain? Because in this trilogy, we took three movies, three movies to set him up as a villain. Three freaking awesome movies. Well, unlike in this movie series, you only, you barely see him and Peter being friends, and he just starts hating, hating Spider-Man, and Peter. It, okay, Dane DeHaan does annoy me as Green Goblin with the over, overacting and screaming and stuff, but I do think he did try, he was trying, it's just that, that, when he's be he's finally Green Goblin, it does feel like, eh, you did not have to go that route for a second movie. You could wait until May Spider-Man Three, which, thank you, that movie's not happening because Spider-Man is back home. Now we're going to talk about the lot of interests in both of these fran these franchises. In this trilogy, you got Mary Jane Watson played by the beautifully talented Kirsten Dines. And I'm one of the people who will continue to defend Kirsten Dines because I like Kirsten Dines in this role. I think she has a good collaboration with Tobey Maguire. The chemistry works. Yeah, it's on and off, but hey, it's in the comics. The relationship is on and off in the comics. And. I think people just don't like Kirsten Dunst because she's not, she's not the Mary Jane you wanted. But it's a comic book movie, so I'm going to give Kirsten Dunst the benefit of the doubt because she is a great actress and she, I like her as an actress and I will continue to defend her and she's beautiful as Mary Jane. In the Amazing Spider-Man series, you got none other than Gwen Stacy. Emma Stone, who is gorgeous and also a hot lady, but I like Emma Stone too. I think the collaboration between her and Garfield will work. But if I had any nitpicks with the relationship, is that in the Maze of Spider Man 2, she breaks up with him only to get back together with him. And him. But that was fine. I know what the relationship they were trying to do, and I did hear that in the Freddy Mace part, they were going to have Shailene Woodley, which it would have been awesome to see Shailene Woodley and Mary Jane, but I would like to see Shailene Woodley get another chance as Mary Jane in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, because I don't want to see Bella Thorne as Mary Jane. Captain Erin McN McNamara, I don't watch Shadow Hunt. well, I do watch Shadow Hunters, but, um, I don't know if she's a good choice. I'm not saying she doesn't look like her, I'm just saying that I don't know if she is a good choice, but Shailene Woodley can be good. If she's not Mary Jane, she could play a different character, but all I know with the MCU spy series is that I don't want to see Miles Morales at all. And I move on my merry way. So ultimately, the winner here is going to have to go to Mary Jane from the San Raimi trilogy. Now, for comedy and jokes, who made the better jokes and who who didn't? Now, let's get on with this. This is going to be fantastic because... To quote a YouTuber named Vayer2591, aka Sean, you can check out his channel. I heard him say in the Amazing Spider-Man duology review on his channel that McGuire made jokes only when it was necessary, when the story called. Andrew Garfield just makes jokes every five minutes. I'm not saying I'm satisfied. I ain't satisfied with it because that is cool to see it just after a while it does get a little bit annoying and it kind of takes me out of the movie a little bit but 
I ain't hating. I ain't hating. I'm not hating, okay? Why should I hate? Why should I hate? But, I. But whose jokes were more funny? Honestly, it's a tie. But when it comes down to picking one, I gotta give it to Tobey Maguire. I have to give it to Tobey Maguire because Maguire is did the jokes more fantastically and they were more funny. I'm not saying I hate Andrew Garfield's jokes. I just feel like that he takes the jokes a little too far. But it's okay. I shouldn't blame him. He probably but he's a great actor. And but they're both fine. And winner by far is Toby Maguire. And last but not least, the suit. Let's talk about the this. Talk about this badass suit right here. This badass freaking suit. This suit right here. In the 2002-2007 trilogy, it is the suit. I like the design of it. The eyes look pretty fantastic, and. The suit, it has more color to it. It has more awesomeness to it. This has, this suit here, it does have awesomeness to it, but it's kind of lackluster, but, um, I'm not going to sit here and say that I owe, oh, I hate Andrew Garfield's suit, because I don't. I like both suits, but the problem is, I just kind of don't like, like it in some moments and it's it's that um it's um his is that it's it's which one I like more and I know I know I'm going to get a shit ton of hate by the end of this video once this is uploaded and posted but I don't give a care I am it, I'm saying what I feel, and I don't care. I don't care. But slightly, the suit has got to go to the to the, to this. I gotta give it to this. So overall, this is a pretty big challenge, but it has also been one of the toughest things I had to do in the movie versus movie thing. Really break it down, but um. Die breaking each both each of these both of these series apart and explaining which I like love interests villains tone jokes actors and as much as I do like this series these movies do have their problems they're not the best Spider-Man movies the but these are the best but I know people who hate this movie I <laughs> these movies, especially Spider-Man 3, but that's fine. But when you watch both of these franchises together, um, the Amazing Spider-Man series doesn't hold up. This always wins. The Sam Raimi trilogy always wins. Thank you. So, that was my movie versus movie. I hope I wasn't too harsh on 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 Andrew Garfield's movies. Let me know what you think about them down below. Do you like which one do you think work based on tone, actor, villains, love interests, comedy and jokes, and suits? Bye.